I am back in the sewing room today and I have my cast iron skillet with me. And if you've done much cooking with these, you know that it's nice to have, instead of just a regular pot holder when you use it, to have a holder that's designed specifically for the skillet handle. And this particular one that I have is worn out, it's burned around the edges, and it needs to be replaced. So I thought I would make one. So let's get started and I'll show you how to do it. You'll need two fabrics for this project. You'll cut an outer fabric at five and a half inches by seven inches, and then another piece out of that same fabric at two inches by four inches, that's for a little hanging loop. And then for your lining fabric, you'll wanna cut again, one piece, five and a half inches by seven inches. You'll need two pieces of batting and each cut at five inches by six and a half inches. I'll be using two separate types of batting. The first type I'm using is called Insel Bright, and it's from the Warm Company, and it's specifically made for projects such as pot holders. Instructions on the back of the Insel Bright package recommend using this product with one layer of cotton batting as well, so that's what I'll be doing today. And the other batting that I'm using is the Warm and Natural 100% cotton batting. I have my two inch by four inch piece of fabric for my hanging loop, and I've simply folded it in half to create a crease. And then all I do is fold in each edge to meet that crease, like so. And then fold again and give it a press. And now it measures one half inch by four inches. And I'll take it to the machine and I'll sew a one eighth inch seam right down here to close it up. I have my quarter inch presser foot. There's no need to secure the thread at this point. And I'm sewing again about a 1 8 inch seam, trying to keep it straight. Now I'll layer my battings to my outer fabric. So first I will flip over to wrong side out. I'll take the Insel Bright batting, place that next to my outer fabric, and I just center it on there. And then my cotton batting on top of the Insel Bright. And I will take it to the machine and I'll just do a few quilting lines to secure the batting to my outer fabric. And these will just be kind of random lines. I'm not measuring to make sure they're straight or anything of the sort. And I've switched to my regular presser foot. And every time I sew a line, I'll just cut it off. Maybe I'll do two kind of right next to each other. And then I'll just do another. whatever you like here on the quilting. And that's how it looks. And then there's the back. Now I have my quilted outer fabric face up, I'll take my lining fabric and I will place that face down so the right sides are together. And I'll sew a seam right across here with my regular presser foot. I will secure the thread this time at the beginning and at the tie off. And I haven't used any pins because it's just a very short seam here. 
but you can of course use pens and tie off. Now I will press that seam open. I'll use a little water. I have my seam pressed open. I've extended my liner fabric over to the right. And now I'll pin in place my loop, my hanging loop. And I will just match up the raw edge to the raw edge. And I'll start just about maybe an inch. Sounds good. And then I'll just fold it over. And raw edge to raw edge. and pin and at this point I'll take it to the machine and I'll just tack it down with just a couple of stitches right here and right here and I'll try when I just tack down this hanging loop to get as close to the edge as I can and it's just a few stitches and then repeat close to the edge. Now that I have my hanging loop tacked down in place, I will fold right sides together and I'll be sewing around all three edges, but I do wanna leave a gap in my lining for turning, about three and a half to four inches, a pretty good size gap. And when I'm pinning, I'll be matching up the seam allowance and my quilting lines the best that I can. I'll start sewing on my lining. And again, I've marked where I don't wanna sew with my double pins. So I'll start by sewing from here to here and here to here. And I'm using, again, my regular presser foot. And I will secure it. tie off. Now I'll start at the opposite end and sew from here to here and all the way down to my double pins. I have all three of my sides now sewn. You can leave it square as it is, as you've sewn it, or you can go ahead and round the end like my original one is rounded. And I have this measuring cup. You can use any glass or anything that you like just as a little guide. And I will place it, I'll flip it around so you can see. I'll place it at the side, at the top, at my seam lines. And the important thing here is to start from the same exact spot on each side. So I'll use my quilting line as a guide, but you can just measure down and I'll just draw a line. And this will be my sewing line. And I'll flip it around and do the same thing on this side. It's a little hard with the uh, batting, but it's doable. And again, I'll just start right there at my quilting line. And I'll show you what that looks like. And I will shorten my stitch length to 2.0 since I'm going around a curve. It tends to help have a smoother curve. And I will back stitch to secure. And I just go slow and follow my line.
And I will clip my excess fabric around my curve. And on my lining end, I'll simply clip my corners a little bit just to reduce a little bit of the bulk. I'm not gonna round it out because it's gonna be stuffed inside anyway and it's not gonna show. To turn it right side out, we'll use this little hole that we left and pull the main fabrics right through that hole. Okay, and then poke out the lining. And to close up my gap, I will just fold in each edge, kind of give it a little finger press, fingernail press, and then I'll just top stitch it closed about with an eighth of an inch seam allowance right there. And by all means, you can use a matching thread if you'd like. I'm just leaving in my same light colored thread. Now I'll stuff the lining into my main fabric, and you can use your fingers, you can use a little tool, pencil, and I just kind of work it in. And I will just poke out my curve a little bit. And if you like, if you like your lining fabric and you want to showcase it a little, you could fold it down and create a little cuff. Off with the old burned, and on with the new. There you have it, a skillet handle pot holder. You can make a regular pot holder to match. It would make a wonderful gift. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.